Hey fellow tennis nerds and welcome to This Week in Tennis. We have a bunch of winners. I want to first congratulate Jan Lennard Struff, who has won his first ATP Tour title in Munich in very, very cold conditions. You could see it on the players. It looked freezing there. It wasn't the nicest conditions to play tennis in but he managed it really well, won his first title. He's been in finals before. Uh, you might remember Stuttgart last year. So this guy can really play, especially on grass and clay, it seems like a bit funnily. So a well-deserving win for Struff, who plays with an extreme of some kind. I think it might be an old extreme pro with that denser string pattern. I don't know the pro stock code. So you racket nerds out there might be able to help me out, but uh, something not too far from what Berrettini plays with is my guess. We also want to congratulate Kasper Ruud for his first ATP 500 title, beating Stefano Tsitsipas in the final in Barcelona. Tsitsipas has been on a streak. Juan Monte Carlo got to the final in Barcelona, so Tsitsipas is back in business and one of the contenders for the French Open, I must say. Uh, as is Kasper Ruud, also a player who loves clay. Uh, these two guys had a great final. Kasper is obviously very difficult to play against with his huge topspin. I don't think you really see the elevation on his shots. I've been to his practice sessions and on clay and you see the ball is just kicking up like crazy, similar to Rafa. And to talk about Rafa, we have to mention that he actually played in Barcelona. He beat Cobolli in the first round. He looked like the Rafa of old, uh, so we got very excited. Then in the next round, he played against Alex Deminor. He looked a little bit less of Rafa of old. Body maybe not 100% ready. Uh, his mind not 100% ready. I mean, he's just back to playing competitively. It didn't look like he was super injured, but he's not in match shape maybe quite yet. He needs a lot of matches and uh, he is training. He's getting ready. He's going to play the clay court events. He did allude to that this was his last Barcelona. And uh, I think that is true. He, this is most likely, I would say 99% his last year on tour. I don't think he goes into a 2025 season the way he, he looked in that match and the way his injury has been uh, derailing him and holding him back. And it's about time, I think, now. But he's on the list for the Labour Cup, so that's quite interesting. Is this going to be his farewell tournament? Possibly. Maybe we'll see like a Roger Rafa rerun from when Roger retired. That would be pretty awesome. So uh, we'll see if that is his last tournament or how he sets up his calendar. But... Uh, he's going for the French Open. He's going to leave it all on the court there. I don't think he cares so much about Wimbledon, to be honest. Maybe he plays just to have a, like a farewell if his body holds up. Uh, but the French Open, he, he's going to want to go all in. Leave it all out there, he said, to like die on the tennis court. Like he really wants to, to give everything. So yeah, he's warming up with these clay events and we'll see him in Madrid. Uh, as with a bunch of other players, uh, Madrid is going to be interesting. Djokovic withdrew from Madrid, so I don't exactly know what's going on there. It's not an injury-related withdrawal. Uh, maybe he's not feeling it, maybe he needs a break, maybe there's something personal going on. We can only speculate, but no Djokovic in Madrid. That leaves a field where Sinner is obviously one of the favorites. Sitsipas is playing ex exceptionally well. Kasper Ruud is red hot right now. And guys like Zverev is obviously dangerous on clay as well. So it's still a very open and strong tournament. And maybe Rafa for one or two rounds. I don't predict him to go far. He doesn't like these faster courts like Madrid. They provide a quite a faster clay experience than Barcelona or even Rome. Talking about fast surfaces, we can also give congrats to Elena Rybakina for winning the Porsche Open in Stuttgart. And that was played indoors on what looks like a clay court. But after talking to people there, thanks to Sebastiano, Sebastiano sent me some clips from Iga's practice and so on. And I got a bit of a close up from of the surface from Atia and he, um, he said it's much faster than, uh, than you'd imagine. It plays more like kind of indoor tennis Although it looks like a clay court, but it's really, really fast. It's a bit special surface there. So not really strange that Rybakina won. If it's clay, we will hold Iga as the favorite. She lost in the semis, uh, but I think she's still the favorite for the French Open and upcoming clay court events. She is uh, very strong on that surface. And if you're a clay court lover, you love clay. I sometimes hate it. I sometimes love it. Uh, generally, I don't like the bounces. And when it's windy, you get like clay everywhere that I don't like, but it's a nice surface to play on. And I do love watching clay court tennis, but we have Abinab on Tennis Nerd of Net. Loads of new content there every day, pretty much. He wrote uh, about the goats of clay. So check that article out. He put some time into that one. It's 2000 words, some stats and stuff. So if you're really into clay court tennis or tennis history, check it out. Comment if you disagree about something or have something to add. It's always nice to have the discussion going on tennisnerd.net. Always new stuff there, putting more effort into it. 
and have some people helping me. I also have a new editor, not for this video. But that helps and frees some of my time because I've been going a bit nuts with not having time to live life because Tennis Nerd takes up a lot. Talking about Tennis Nerd, we also need to mention that there are a bunch of new string reviews there. Uh, there are string reviews coming up of Restring Sync of uh, String Project Sirius, some round strings like Solinka Hyper G round as well. So three round string reviews coming up. All the interesting strings, I would definitely check them out. And there are other string reviews that I haven't tried myself, but we have some skilled contributors uh, doing reviews there. It's like from Miami and from Gamma, uh, strings I haven't even heard about. Check those out, only written reviews for now, but uh, maybe in the future we can add some videos, etc. And talking about strings, Head is releasing a new string that I'm having some of the Tennis Nerd team play test. I'm gonna test it myself, obviously, as well. There are two different versions, and the idea is to get user feedback on which version they should release. They have not made up their mind. And I talk about this string and the rackets and many other things in the next podcast episode coming out tomorrow, Tuesday, with Dennis Fabian. So if we look at your silo, now you have six um, racket lines, right, for, for consumers. If we start with the, the lowest uh, in terms of power, and you have your CPI scale, you're still working with that, right? Like the, the, the power scale. Yes, and we are, we are, we will be introducing for the 2025 season, we will be introducing something new that, that um, might be even easier for consumers because that's kind of where we challenge ourselves to make it simpler, right? Uh, we, we sometimes get critiques that we have the six silos uh, on the flip side, Within each silo, we have the lowest amount of rackets compared to our competition. Um, so we are wider, but we are not as deep as others. Are. And yeah, we have the CPI. I mean, if you go like prestige, pure precision. The global business manager from Head, he's been on the podcast before, but there's always some new stuff happening in the companies. And, and I like that they are open to coming on the podcast. I sometimes struggle to get other brands. I've asked all the brands to, to come on the podcast and talk about their product lines, new products, whatever. And I think there's something interesting there, but I don't get much in terms of response. So if you're a brand manager or a brand and you want to talk about your stuff, which is pretty good marketing for you, I would say, on the Tennis Nerd podcast, please reach out because I've tried and it's not so easy to get any replies. Not sure what's going on or if there's like hush-hush organizations, all of them, but I do appreciate when companies come on. And uh, so that's really what I wanted to say about that. Uh, talking about rackets in general, there's a new white E-Zone and uh, some picks being leaked. Thanks, Andy, for those. Not sure what's happening there, if it's like a, just a cosmetic or if it's something in the works. No idea. Just got this picture. Just wanted to put it out there. Looks pretty cool. But we see a lot of cosmetic updates these days, maybe not always the most exciting with just cosmetic updates. We want to see playability stuff as well. Upcoming content on Tennis Nerd. I'm actually testing a bunch of balls. I hold a box of balls over there, trying to determine what I feel about balls because I do struggle with durability. And if I play like two hours with Daniel on clay, uh, the ball is dead, you know, and hardcore probably 90 minutes. So the, the quality is not where you would want it to be. And I'm going to put even more time into testing balls for my own personal sake like i'm playing a lot of tennis i want to have a ball that's durable has a good bounce and good feel it doesn't break my arm so uh, it seems to be an issue these days to find a uh, good quality tennis balls so if you have any recommendations about tennis ball tennis balls that you use that you think i should try or review let me know in the comments I also want to thank you for the feedback on the heavy rackets video this is part one and part two we will do more philosophical talk videos on tennis nerd i would like to hear your opinions on what we should discuss on the channel there could be some uh, topics there that i've completely missed or that i should elaborate on for example could be about rackets but could also be something else i think tennis nerd goes beyond rackets and strings i almost forgot to congratulate marton fuksovic uh, the tank the really fit guy the fittest guy on the tennis door by looks i don't know uh, but he beat mariano navone in the Tiriak Open in Bucharest, I think it is, ATP 250. And Fuksovic can play really impressive tennis when he's on. And uh, yeah, so a title to him, big congrats. Also a WTA 250. Sloane Stevens back to winning ways, beating Magda Linette in Rouen in France. Uh, we also have a guy you should watch out for. Carousel mentioned it on his Instagram as well. Uh, Mpechi Pericard, very, very dangerous player. Got two challenger titles, I think, in consecutive weeks. Last in Acapulco, Mexico. This guy is someone who's going to rise the rankings. I agree with Karu. I've seen this guy. He's, he's definitely going to be a tough player for high-ranking ATP pros as well. So, all right. So we get excited about Madrid now. Uh, excited to see Rafa back in action uh, for his last year of tennis. 
and all the stuff that will follow uh, some exciting tennis to come. There's also um, first impressions about the Technifiber TFX1 version 2, the 98 square inch version and the Vulkle Vustra 315 gram version on the YouTube members or Patreon page. So if you want to support Tennis Nerd, get extra content, first impressions before everyone else and so on, please support. It doesn't cost a lot and helps the channel, helps Tennis Nerd uh, to grow and remain sustainable without me working myself to death. So that's about it. Have a nice day now and don't forget to play some tennis.